it would have been a disaster if like we were in those uh, uh, so days. Then you see that uh, the hospitals can't work, ventilators can't work, uh, you know, uh, you, you quarantine people or you, you lock down cities and people at home and there's no power. If there's no power, there's likely not to be also water because uh, to get water, you need electrical pumps yeah. to pump the water and distribute the water. So yes, life would have been really, really uh, bad. I can't imagine now even how things uh, would, have, would have become. But uh, it's a very important question you've uh, raised. So I think our government, experiencing from what happened, you see that uh, the government even granted free electricity and free water to the, the people simply because these are vital necessities of life. Without power, without water, life, in the modern sense that we know it, cannot uh, go on. And no business can work. And so uh, all the hospitals and other health facilities cannot work. Therefore, I think the lesson that we have for all of us, governments and non-government agencies alike, is that we must take the energy sector very, very seriously and ensure that there is stability in the power sector and that uh, the, the power sector is managed in a way that we never return to those days where there's insufficiency of power because we do not know what crisis else will befall us. But no matter what it is, every crisis that happens energy will be a critical necessity. Um, some of the concerns there could be politically motivated because you should look at the sector and ask yourself what led to the overcapacity. The previous government was addressing a very critical issue of very deep uh, power shortfall and so it had to get on board several power plants that to come up to the level of demand now in that process we see that the system is having over capacity, excess capacity for about 100%, which is very high. So I think the peak demand is about 2,700 there about, and now we have about twice that, which is about uh, nearly nearly 5,000, yeah. a little less, than, uh, but very close to 5,000 yeah. uh, megawatts. So that means that due to the power purchase agreement, which is take or pay, it means that half of the plants, you know, have a contract that even if they don't generate, you have to pay Amen. for uh, the capacity installed. Of course, this is not a good thing to happen. But we must not look at it as if it was the normal situation, uh, situation of uh, planning for uh, capacity expansion. No, it's not a normal capacity expansion thing. It was a period of quenching a very devastating power crisis in the country. So there were, you had to bring some which are emergency power plants. Then you had to bring some that would take the country a little, pushing it into the future. Because at that time, the previous uh, 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 president, the ex-president, had his mind on fixing the problem, the problem, not containing it. And he kept saying that, look, this power crisis has happened to every single president that had come. Jerry Rollins suffered uh, Dumso, Kufour. Kufour suffered Dumso, uh, Atamil suffered Dumso. Mahama has suffered doing so. So it's nothing new. But it should not be countenance. We don't want these things to happen. Now Mahama is saying that 
whenever it happens, they manage it and then it goes away. Then it recurs because it has not been fixed. That is the root cause of the thing has not been addressed. So he said, look, let me take my time and address the situation. That is why his, uh, the doomsday lasted for about three or more years under his administration when previous ones had lasted maybe a year or two because he had to take his time, get to the bottom of the thing and fix it. Had it not been for the fixation of the uh, doomsday crisis, like this government when it assumed mm -hmm. the power, the reins of uh, uh, government, would have run into doomsday again. But for the fact that we, they left an overcapacity, mm -hmm. Now the economy is still growing, yeah. the population is growing. Yeah, we need more power. And so it will be taken from that reserve. Previously, we were running a power system with a, a spinning reserve uh, only of about maybe, uh, what, less than 10%, maybe 5%. Mm -hmm. And that is not good enough. A good, well managed system should have at least 20, 15 to 20%. As the reserve money, so that should be taken from the overcapacity. Then the excess. Every year annually, Ghana needs additional 200 megawatts. So the overcapacity that we have is only about it's, it's about, uh, let's say uh, 2,000 megawatts. Mm. So within the next uh, maybe 10 four, years, 10 or years, five, uh, 15 yes, years, we we'll still have. have uh -huh. So I agree that they should re renegotiate the, the price if they can do that. That's why that is what change of governments are for. Because the government that was solving a different problem will be forced to enter certain agreements. But when there's a change of government, because they are coming as not the primary uh, uh, you know partners or involving in the contract, they can sit back and say that, look, let's look at it and renegotiate. So it's a good thing. That's why governments, we say, are continuing. We do something, you come in, you take advantage of the change and then get some corrective measures. But the fact is that we know that because of this overcapacity, the country too has increased its export of power oh. tremendously. So it's a good thing because now it answers to one of our energy policy positions that Ghana should become a net exporter of power. of power. Of course, for you to be able to export power, it has to be at a certain price. The price must be good. It must be cheap. And we've been told that currently the prices are quite high. Yeah. That is where, yes, you should negotiate. But when you negotiate, how can we export power if we don't have excess capacity? So it's not generally a bad thing that we have over capacity because that is that will address a policy issue of exports. So negotiate the prices so that we can put it on the uh, ECOWAS market through the West African power pool. And I'm saying that it is already happening and bringing revenue into the country. So there must be some innovative arrangements so that we can yes get the contracts renegotiated and bring the pricing into manageable range, but then also uh, get our export-driven policy being, uh, you know, being being uh, met. So this is what I'll say about that. But then this should be a warning to all all uh, appointees, be it uh, current or future that when they come in, this type of uh, power purchases and capacity expansion, it is a whole, there is a whole methodology mm -hmm. of doing that. There's a, you know, uh, so that you don't over capacity yourself, you don't establish excess capacity unwanted, but also so that you can meet the growth of your economy and the people. And uh, the way to do it is to leave the utilities, the, 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 not the utilities, but the, 
they're regulated, mm -hmm. give them that uh, freedom to be able to do professional work. Okay. The Energy Commission, PURC, you know, and uh, reduce the political Influence. interferences that are inside this. Because a lot of times, it is not that uh, they don't know, but it's just that they have to succumb to external pressure from the political elite.